And good morning. Welcome to Community Voice. Today is Tuesday, April 5th. I'm your host, Josh Engel. Today we're going to be chatting about the Way of the Cross Sacred Event, meditations, music, and visual art for reflection on Christ's sacrifice. Today we have very special guests, Tony Childers and Don McCord. They are the organizers of this event. Uh, a couple of the organizers of the event. I'm sure a lot of folks uh, had a hand in making Lots. this uh, event come together. But today we're going to be chatting about the event, uh, what you can expect at the event, how it came together, and of course how you can attend on April 10th at 3 p.m. So uh, first and foremost, uh, good morning to both of you. Good morning. Thank you so much for coming on the program. Uh, tell us a bit about yourself. Uh, start with Tony. Oh, uh, uh, thank you. The um, uh, I'm Tony Childers, and I'm the organist and music director at First Methodist here in Carrollton, Georgia. Uh, that's a role I just started uh, in February. I've been filling in as the interim director since August, but I've been the organist of the church there for 33 years, so we have quite a long relationship. A lot of people in town will know me because I'm a retired school principal from Central Elementary here right in the Carrollton community. So be honest, what is, uh, what's more stressful, being the principal of a school or uh, being the organist at, uh, at a church? Uh, I, I would have to say being the principal of the school because you never know what's going to happen. Sure. <laughs> At least you can expect the organ to play ball. Usually, yes, yes. Excellent. Well, um, so you are, you are, as you mentioned, the music director and organist at First United Methodist Church. Um, as we will see, uh, this is a uh, this event is a partnership with a lot of different mm -hmm. churches, so we're yes. going to be uh, speaking about those churches more here in a bit. Let's throw it over to Don McCord. Uh, Don, good morning, ma'am. Tell good us a morning. bit about yourself. Don McCord, and um, I'm retired from the University of West Georgia from the music department program, and um, I'm currently organist at the Lutheran Church, Grace Lutheran, over by Chick-fil-A. So you're both organists. Mm -hmm. Yes, and that's a critical part. Critical? That's probably not the right word. Yeah. But uh, an essential. important part. Essential. That's a better word. Um, part of this particular um, uh, program. Wonderful. So, well... Let's talk about the program. So let's talk a bit about the Way of the Cross event. Uh, please uh, tell folks, uh, you know, in general, what it is and how did it come together? Go ahead. Well, in general, Stations of the Cross have been a part of um, learning in the Christian church long before people could read. And so the, the pictures that are icons that were present in a lot of churches and continue to this day um, tell the story of the Passion of Christ. And this particular event uh, starts with the condemnation of Jesus to the placement in the sepulcher. So it's uh, generally observed prior to Easter in preparation for the resurrection and so it, it's come a lot of different ways and last fall I was listening to a recording of a famous organist Marcel Dupre who is like one of the um, quintessential organists in a lot of different ways and uh, his improvisations along with this particular reading that we're using today that's been translated by many people but it's by a French Roman Catholic named Paul Claudel and it's quite moving and I think Tony's going to be reading um, one of the readings from that and in that particular uh, uh, recording that I heard I was so moved that I couldn't get it out of my head I first of all thinking I wish I could play like that because he's he's totally amazing and and or was and then I got to thinking you know we could do something like that in Carrollton and it kind of grew from there and I thought about the the fact that the early church had the the visuals and then I thought of Clint Samples who is is um, one of my favorite artist here in town and um, I thought well we could do art and we could do the organ music and we could get organists from different churches so I kind of came up laid out the plan for it and then met with Tony and his wife Cheryl and they agreed that this could be a really nice service so we sat and kind of planned out some of the further details that we needed mm -hmm. 
And from there, uh, we we invited several people and um, of the ones available for that particular Sunday. Uh, we didn't want to have too many because it would be like you know soup yeah. <laughs> vegetable soup you know kind of thing and so but on uh, james kimmel who is quite talented and comes um high pedigree from baylor i believe yes, yes. university you know and so uh he's at tabernacle um, baptist and so he agreed to play and tony's church agreed to host the church and that's first united methodist and then from there um we got clint involved and then we involved um some readers that we think will do a great job and we have faye bird a lot of people know her from her art but she does a lot with theater too mm-hmm. in town and tommy cox of uh, first baptist and Mimi Gentry from Carrollton Presbyterian. Mm-hmm. Yeah, everybody knows Mimi. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, one of her friends said, I hope she won't mind me saying this, said, oh, Mimi reads? Because <laughs> everybody's used to her singing. <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> so anyway, that was uh, it just has come together in amazing ways. And yeah. um, the, the program cover was actually developed at Tabernacle, their graphics person there at the church. And and Tony's church has reached out and included some um, things that they haven't done in their church, a way for us to project this artwork and the artwork. Am I going too much in detail? No, I'm loving Should, it. I'm, uh, I'm soaking it up. Okay. So the artwork, um, Clint decided to go with more traditional um art that portrays these different stations of the cross and the path from the condemnation to the sepulcher uh el greco um who are some of the artists you know uh, is um f- famous martin farstein yeah and uh, Raphael, i believe uh, is um uh, one Marillo. of them yeah so i mean it's mm-hmm. yeah a, a lot of um wonderful art that is quite moving and um, fitting for this Tupelo, particular yeah a lot of great artists partnering together uh i'm honestly mm-hmm. i i think that it's uh it's a great story just hearing about the churches all unifying together to put together mm-hmm. this event i mean mm-hmm. you know in harmony like yeah. like right. instruments so they yeah. they've all come together to add their piece to contribute to this uh as right. you said before the program a very sacred event uh, an event put in place uh, to honor uh, the path of the cross from his condemnation until he's in the mm-hmm. sepulcher. Um, Tony, if you could uh, speak a bit on on that partnership between these churches. I mean, is this is something that had happened before? Uh, actually, several years ago, after we installed the new pipe organ at First Methodist, we did have a joint concert uh, involving several organists in town. So in that sense, yes, we've had that kind of cooperation um, and, and development of a musical program. But it's been several years. Um, I like collaborating with others. It, it's one of the themes that helped me uh, with success at our school before I retired. And uh, I, when Don brought the idea to me, I was like, yes, yes, that's a great idea. No so, brainer, let's do right, it. Right, exactly. Because you know, typically working together with others yields a bigger product than you can do on your own. So I, I was excited about that. And especially when we started bringing in the multimedia kinds of ideas and, and putting together the visual aspect of the stations to, to help portray these images that we were trying to evoke through the readings and through the music. So it, it's gonna be a lot of the senses working together there. So that's great. Tuesday, April 5th, we are talking with Don McCord and Tony Childers about the Way of the Cross event. It's going to be coming up on April 10th at 3 p.m. Uh, we are live streaming right now on our WLBB Facebook uh, WLBB Facebook page. Uh, we are uh, streaming live there. So if you have any questions or comments for Don or Tony, feel free to hop on there and type them in, and I'll be happy to read them to our guests. Uh, we're going to go ahead and take our first break, but when we come back, we will continue our conversation with Don and Tony as we chat about the Way of the Cross event and uh, chat about the meditations, the music, and the visual arts aspect of this event. So stay with us. Health is a journey. It's making better choices, even when it's not easy. It's taking care of yourself and the people you love. 
At Tanner Health System, we're there for you with every step, with primary care, heart care, cancer care, women's care, orthopedics, surgical services, and so much more. We're dedicated to helping you live and feel your best. So let's get on that journey to health. You've got places to be for many years to come. Find us at Tanner.org. As a graduate of Oak Mountain Academy, I found that my experience on the mountain prepared me beyond all expectations. As a junior at Auburn University, I approached my studies with great confidence thanks to what I learned at OMA. When I think back on my time on the mountain, I think of my teachers. Their genuine love and concern for me as a student was always evident. And now, as an adult, I still foster those relationships. I'm Carly Robinson, an Oak Mountain Academy alum. Visit oakmountain.us to see how you can offer your child an amazing opportunity to be a warrior. And we're back to Community Voice, Tuesday, April 5th. I'm your host, Josh Engel, and we're chatting with Don McCord and Tony Childers, organizers of the Way of the Cross sacred event, Meditations, Music, and Visual Art for Reflection on Christ's Sacrifice. That's going to be coming up on April 10th at 3 p.m. If you're just tuning in, be sure to check out the podcast of this episode, which will be uploaded to the station's website, as well as graticcommunications.com and our brand new Gratic Communication app. Uh, definitely check out apps for the stations. Uh, the WLBB app, we'll be getting that on there. And we're also streaming live on Facebook. So if you have any questions or comments for our guest, type them on in there, and we will uh, we'll read them to our guests. So let's chat more about in detail about the Way of the Cross event. We just chatted about how it came together, the significance of this cooperation between so many local churches uh, to make this event possible. So... Um, as per the title here, meditations, music, and visual arts. These are all, uh, you know, honestly, I mean, I could be wrong, but I think of it almost like a, an art festival dedicated to Christ's sacrifice and the cross. Mm -hmm. That's so, a good way to say it. Right? Yeah. So it kind of gives you uh, different perspectives. Folks are used to reading. They're used to, you know, oral traditions and hearing these stories. But to be able to see this art, uh, to hear this music, uh, to hear these uh, these readings, I mean, that is uh, it's very powerful stuff. So it, mm -hmm. let's chat about the meditation side of it, the, the readings. Uh, let me highlight a, a small passage from one of the readings. Could I, I say something before you read it? Sure. This particular reading is not typical of a lot of things it is definitely a poem that challenges the people that are listening it challenges the people that are reading and it's quite affective in its approach and in delivery and that's why we've had people with acting experience to read it because it's it's just powerful mm -hmm. and um tony has chosen a, a particular part of the poem that that highlights that mm -hmm. i think that's a good choice now this is from the the fifth station uh, considered to be where Simon the Cyrenian helps Jesus carry the cross and it goes the moment comes when it's enough you can't move now that's when we find our nerve and you allow us to be your instruments to take the cross against our will like Simon of Cyrene called to bear it up the hill he shouldered it with sturdy strength and walked behind Jesus. That way, the cross would not be dragged. No splinter lost to us. Wow. So this is an idea of this sort of very personal, intimate, cerebral readings that are going to be going on at the Way of the Cross event. Yes. And uh, after some of the selections that, that are read, we've chosen music to help portray the image in, in the way that only music can do. Uh, and the artwork that will be displayed will show an image of, of Simon carrying the cross in Jesus' place at that point in that walk to Golgotha. The place of the skull. So, the, so in an effort to combine these various mediums, you are given an experience, not just a, a seminar, not just a lesson. This is truly an experience mm -hmm. that um, that sort of helps put you in the place of this very, very intense moment in history. Yes, exactly. So how many readers uh, 
will you uh, will you have there? I know that these are local performers right. that will be bringing that necessary gravitas to the reading. We have three readers. Uh, Don listed their names a moment ago, but I will read them again. Faye Bird, uh, Tommy Cox, and Mimi Gentry. Uh, and you know, we we wanted to choose people that would help us with the, the dramatic styles of reading that, that are needed for the program like this and and also to bring in people from other uh, churches in the area so so that it's not just first methodist and the lutheran church and the baptist church but inclusive of of lots of faith traditions here in town something i just realized i hadn't mentioned where will this event be the event's taking place at First Methodist Church of Carrollton, Georgia, uh, located at 206 Noonan Street near downtown. We're about one block off the square. Now, how did uh, why was this uh, location chosen? Because we have a great pipe organ in our church. <laughs> Excellent. So the music will, will so this will be live accompaniment with the uh, with the speakers. The the speakers will read and then we will play. So so the the speakers will read without music background and then we will play our selections and the art will be displayed. Wow. Well, let's speak a bit about the music selections if we can. The music selections which will accompany, um, which will of course accompany mm -hmm. the uh, the speakers. Um, could you speak a bit about the pieces and a bit about their significance to this event? Absolutely. Um, I have chosen to play a, a setting of Jesus Walked This Lonesome Valley uh, arranged by Dale Wood uh, as one selection that helps portray these images because carrying that cross was a, a lonesome event for mm -hmm. Jesus. Uh, Don has chosen a really nice setting that, that involves some trumpeters. Yes, I'm excited about this. I, I don't, it's not a well-known piece. I, I think all of my pieces are more contemporary um, in, in when I say contemporary in approach to just written during this time. Sure. <laughs> Not going with um, some other definition. Not so like 1600, 1700. <laughs> You're right, yeah. And so, and I'm, I'm pretty sure that's, that's true. I'd have to think about that. But this one particular piece, um, it was recommended by the trumpet teacher at West Georgia for a couple of students to do in their recital. And of course, we no longer have a recital hall in, in Cashin. And um, so they did their recital in Townsend that did not have an organ. So we did not end up doing it. But it's a very haunting piece based on um, Mary's response um, either to the cross or to the birth. I can't, I'm can't. i not sure which one it was now. But um, it, Honestly, it's probably applicable to both, really. Yeah, I guess so. And um, But anyway, and so it, the re, that particular one will be Mary recognizing this time in Jesus' life, her son's life. And uh, they have an interesting setup at First United Methodist, so it's kind of a perfect place for it. But So the two trumpeters, there are two small balconies on either side of the nave or the general part where people sit. And so they'll be playing from there. And it's a very haunting um, piece and totally appropriate for for that and so it it's that follows that particular reading and and there's another one that is uh, just talking about the music and you must um i'm trying to think of the dun dun dun, dun. anyway <laughs> is this mr is kimmel's that, piece uh, in, in the, <laughs> <laughs> no, that's fun. But um, anyway, there all of them, for the most part, are a direct response to the the, the reading, reading. Right. that's so. there, and so um, I'm excited about that. So I, I will highlight uh, one of James's pieces. He he has selected an arrangement by David Sherwin of the hymn tune "Beautiful Savior," which is uh, probably sung in almost every denomination in our town here. Either that or Ferris Lord Jesus right, right. is the same tune. Sure. Yes. Yeah. And and so we we've put these selections together to reflect and touch the hearts of the people after the readings to to help them 
think about that great sacrifice. Well, we're uh, talking with Don McCord and Tony Childers uh, about the Way of the Cross sacred event, meditations, music, and visual art for reflections on Christ's sacrifice. That's going to be happening on April 10th, 3 p.m. at uh, First United Methodist Church right here in downtown Carrollton. When we come back, we're going to chat more about the visual arts aspect of this event as well as where you can find out more information and how you can be there. So uh, stay with us. Health is a journey. It's making better choices, even when it's not easy. It's taking care of yourself and the people you love. At Tanner Health System, we're there for you with every step, with primary care, heart care, cancer care, women's care, orthopedics, surgical services, and so much more. We're dedicated to helping you live and feel your best. So let's get on that journey to health. You've got places to be for many years to come. Find us at Tanner.org. Oak Mountain Academy has offered a challenging college preparatory education for 60 years. With over 500 graduates, we have maintained a 100% college acceptance rate. Over 90% of our students earn acceptance to their first choice of college or university, and over the past five years, our students have earned over $10 million in scholarship offers. Our students are creating a legacy. Come, be a part of our family, and create your own legacy today. To learn more, visit us at oakmountain.us. And we're back to Community Voice, Tuesday, April 5th. Joining us today in the studio is Tony Childers and Don McCord. And I'm your host, Josh Engel. We're talking about the Way of the Cross sacred event, meditations, music, and visual art for reflections on Christ's sacrifice. It's going to be going on April 10th at 3 p.m. at the Methodist Church right here in Carrollton, downtown. Uh, we were chatting uh, just now about the uh, elements of this event. Uh, we just got to the visual arts. Now, if you're just tuning in, be sure to check out the podcast of this episode, which will be uploaded to the station's website as well as the app. Uh, and uh, we're also streaming live on Facebook. So if anyone has any questions or comments for Don or Tony, feel free to type those in. So uh, let's talk about the visual arts aspect. Uh, you know, we have a trifecta here. We have, we have readings. We have music, visual arts. Let's talk about the significance of that. Uh, as Don and I began the conversation about this event, uh, we we quickly thought of adding this element of, of the visuals uh, because that's typically how the Stations of the Cross uh, service would go. A, a lot of traditions have these plaques on the wall or icons around the church, and they walk from one station to the other as they're going through the, uh, the service. Uh, so we wanted to include some visuals, and, and we have a good friend, Clint Samples, that we thought would be uh, helpful with us. We called Clint and Clint was quickly on board with this mm -hmm. idea, wasn't he? Yes, he was. And that was that was great. And he's pulled in some really nice pieces of art, um, just to give a couple of of, of samples. The uh, El Greco that Don mentioned a minute ago is is titled Visio Divina, or Christ on the Cross with two Maries and Saint John, and that of course reflects the moment when Jesus addressed his mother from the cross wow. woman behold thy son and that's in the reading that we will we will look at another piece that that he has is jesus taken down from the cross to help us get an idea not just from the reading and not just from the music but through our sight and were these pieces um were they created specifically for this event, or were they a, a piece that had existed prior but fits perfectly and right, was sought they, out? Yes, curated. They had, right. They, he curated would be a great word. The uh, the pieces that we'll be seeing, because the one I just described, Jesus is taken down from the cross, is from fifteen sixty two. Oh yeah, it would take a lot of and, planning to have someone make that for this event. Right, right. <laughs> and and the El Greco work is anywhere between sixteen hundred and sixteen ten. So. The, these are ancient artworks, and, and uh, they have been telling this story for hundreds of years. I love that. I love the way you put that. They've been telling the same story for a very long time. Now, how will these be incorporated into the event? Will they be displayed? Will they be projected uh, above mm -hmm. the, the readers? Yes. Um, <laughs> uh, we have put together two large screen, high-definition televisions uh, that will 
be used for displaying the artwork that's been selected uh, to make it easy for people to see. Uh, we've, we've looked at the stage layout so that the organist will be uh, visible and, and the readers will have a prominent spot. But of course, we want the story to take the prominent spot. Well, that was actually, uh, that segues nicely into my next question. What do you hope that attendees take from this event? I am so excited about this. As musicians, I think we're used to having um, things like applause and people singing and doing things that's just kind of a typical thing. But this is a time of reflection and meditation. So we're not asking the audience to do anything but be in prayer and mm -hmm. think about the events. And their different stations will speak differently to different people just like the visual art has always the the last um art i think everybody's probably seen a lot of this art before so it's not going to be totally surprising but with the readings and the music i think it'll be a special but the last particular one with mary and one of the other women at in the sepulcher with jesus body is one that I'd never seen, and it's a different portrayal of Jesus, and I think it'll be stark mm. in that. But along with that, during this whole event, people will be either in prayer or just thinking about the event, um, uh, the series of events mm -hmm. that took place that we've, it's nothing new, but it challenges us to be in prayer and so it's a meditation reflection as you spoke right. uh, at the beginning of the event it's a, a, at, the, at the beginning of the program this is a sacred event mm -hmm. a sacred event of reflection mm -hmm. how about you tony um i i want it to be an experience that touches hearts uh the the message that we're trying to portray is about that great sacrifice that took place uh, around two thousand years ago uh, and we've been telling that story ever since. Uh, as as, uh, as Christians, we, we live with hope in the resurrection, but these events led up to that day. And, and that sacrifice of Jesus on the cross had to take place before the resurrection could take place. So it's a heart event for me. If this event goes well, do you think this might be something you'd want to do again, either next year or potentially every so many years? We had a very good conversation about that. Yeah. Yes, I, we would love for something like this to take off and, and become possibly an annual or periodic event to, to just pull us in and remind us uh, of that great sacrifice. Very essential. Now, where can folks uh, find out more information? Um, where can they, uh, are tickets required for the event? And uh, if so, how can one acquire them? Uh, no tickets will be required. Uh, the doors will open about 2.30 on the Sunday afternoon, April 10th, uh, and people can come in and take a seat. Uh, we have plenty of seating in, in our church sanctuary. Uh, I, don't, I don't foresee that being a problem. Um, additional information, I've posted uh, an event announcement on, on my Facebook page. Um, we will probably create a QR code that can be used to access the brochure that we've put together. Uh, it is not live yet, so um, just be on the lookout. We may add that link to the First Methodist website so that people can go there. Perfect. Excellent. Well, uh, any final thoughts before we wrap up? It has been a pleasure for me to work with Don and James and Clint to put this program together, uh, and it's our delight at First Methodist to host this event. I'm excited. <laughs> I'm very, you know, I, I have read this many times. In fact, there are numerous <coughs> translations of this um, poem, and um, we have been through several iterations and changing which translation, because it's written in French, and um, I'm moved every single time, and everybody that reads it, and Mimi sent me an email, she said, oh, this is heavy, yeah. and so, um, and it is, it is a story that um, Christians understand. Well, that's going to be the Way of the Cross sacred event, April 10th at 3 p.m. at First United Methodist Church. Tony, Don, thank you very much for joining us. And to you tuning in at home, 
We'll see you next time.